Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Or welcome to the channel if you're new. Uh, we are here. We're beginning our paranormal investigation of the uh, Peoria State Hospital. Yep, that's what we're doing. I'm excited. I'm regretting my decision. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> we, got our, we got our equipment. We got all of our stuff. Uh, the guy said if you're here looking for ghosts, this is where you park. We just parked. We just parked. So we're going in, we're going to do some investigating, and I uh, hope you enjoy the video. Hopefully we survive. Yeah, or this is going to be <laughs> a found footage film. It's going to be like a Blair Witch. All right, enjoy it. We'll see you guys at the end of it. Bye. Bye. Nine years, seven years doing tours. Um, we used to be in the old tuberculosis building, which you guys will see. Uh, we unfortunately had something happen with our building, but we wound up with even better, because now we run most of the hilltop. Okay. My dad, I think I was older, but it was an actual stroller. So we came out. Yeah. And then three, four is a little bit farther of a walk, but I know a couple of us later. I feel like we're going to be in for the whole night, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're in this group. <laughs> All right. I will mentally prepare myself. For this. Should I call Danny now? To yeah. Bring I'm just going to text Drew right away. Just say, don't expect me until way late tonight. <laughs> and there's a saloon right next door. So. There you go. Hey. hey. Um, now, in Cemetery 2, we do have a very famous patient. Um, you've probably you've maybe seen him on YouTube and a couple other places. Um, it was a gentleman that came down from Chicago. When he arrived here, he no longer had the ability to speak. Um, he couldn't write. He was illiterate at the time, so he couldn't sign his name, couldn't let the nurses know who he was. So the nurse did what she could, and she looked into his paperwork. It said, occupation, manual A bookbinder. So that was his name. That's what she wrote down for his name. He was old book or bookbinder. Now bookbinder eventually was assigned an eight hour day job to keep him busy. He was still pretty active. Um, and he got assigned to the, the cemetery duty. It was commonly known as grave digger, but they did a lot more than that. They caretake, they were caretakers of the ground. So they, you know, cut the grasses, they made this, everything look nice. Um, then they did dig the graves and they filled him in. And when Bookminder dug the graves, he also attended the funerals. And that's when he became pretty special. When he attended the funerals, and at every funeral he attended, he would go over to an old tree, and he would weep and wail and cry with just great passion. And it, it was such, an, such a thing to behold that eventually the patients became, to, it became superstitious. They, were, they would tell their doctors, Doctor, old book has to cry at my funeral. If he doesn't cry, old scratch is going to come take me away. And it just went on like that. And he was a very beloved patient. Now... When Old Book finally passed away, just he came succumbed to the disease, just like so many people did back then. Oh, there's a whole bunch. Who are you talking to? Myself. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. I already don't like it. This is where it gets interesting. And I do have two flat I think we might need one. Huh? I think we might need one. Yes. Not that anybody else. No. So just have a flashlight. Do you want to get them up? I don't know which you guys can join them. Alrighty. You are standing in Cottage B1. This was built in 1929, and for a majority of its life, it was a male patient cottage. 
Now that means, like you would have seen in the slideshow, the male patients would have had the billiard tables in their cottages after they would have worked an eight hour workday, right? You remember that from the slideshow, the pictures? Mm -hmm. They would have had their billiard tables in this room, in the grand room is what they called this area. You guys came in through one of the sun porches, is what they call them, because they like to get their sunlight from out there. So they would have had their um, afternoon, <coughs> evening sunlight coming in through the sun porches and the windows on the side there. The original front door you guys will be leaving out of to head on to your next location. That will be those two doors right there. The two wings on either side would have been where the patients would have had their beds. You would have had beds under every window. And you can see about how the windows are styled here in the grand room. That's how they would have been in the wings as well. Only they're all the middle window there, the, the single pane, the three glass panes there. Those windows line all the way down. Originally here in the grand room, like they have the two dormers on the other side here. There should be two dormers on the opposite side over these windows here. However, one of the last owners took the dormers out and fixed the roof line there, which is fantastic because they also saved the dormer pieces. We have all of the dormer pieces <coughs> set in storage right now down in the other wings. Unfortunately, we can't let you in for insurance reasons. But we are hoping to one day restore it back to its original state with the dormers. Um, the table that you have here in front of you is what we call our oracle table. And it's very different from a Ouija board. It's got the um, different yeah. zodiac signs on it. I think I, I remember like knowing what these signs were, but I kind of forgot. They're all the different, you know, yeah, the different uh, zodiac <laughs> signs, so they're based on your birthday. And then the three signs in the middle here have to do with what we do and everything that we've done in our time here. Um, I have also placed on here a spirit box, yeah. which is once again not cycling through like it's supposed to. Um, this cycles through the different frequencies. If you don't know what a spirit box is, it also occasionally allows them to speak through it and talk to us. They're singing. Again, Something about that. Where I keep seeing something. It's like, you know, and then you kind of see how it's got some light cast in here. Mm -hmm. It seems like the light's going to be fucked up. I'm sure it's not like the tree moving outside or something. Because there's a bunch of That's what I was looking at. That's through a whole different doorway. So oh. the light oh. I'm getting is off of that plastic. Oh, I didn't oh. realize it was plastic. Yeah. Are you sure? No, 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 no. As long as you don't mind, I'm still being on the camera. She don't mind. You'll, you'll end up on our YouTube you video, I promise. You'll be all right. I got Snapchat. No. There you go. <laughs> I was saying, I kept swearing I saw something moving over here. I just heard something say hello in the graveyard. I heard something like, like, that's it. Each window down the wing, and then I believe it was around the middle. Oh, we're going back to the graveyard. Yeah, she liked that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll cover you. So good. Look at Jaws in there. You said we can't go in there? Huh? You said we can't go in there? No, no, we can't go in there. For <laughs> insurance purposes. But I've got. Look, look. Oh. 
from Celsius to degrees, from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Sometimes they're just not in here. That's what it is, paranormally hunting sometimes. Gary is a woman who came to us very late in her life, but began her journey, uh, her battle with mental illness very early. 16, 17, 18. Um, she's from the far south in Illinois, Clark County. So, almost 10. Well, she was the youngest of nine children. Mother died very shortly after she was born. Her father obviously getting very well on in years, raising eight other children. So, she had a lot of afflictions, but what we amount to uh, schizophrenia, epilepsy, which a lot of people considered her possessed for it, um, and pica. Uh, you, you, you know what pica is. I'm a nurse, I know exactly you know what pica, pica is. is at all. Okay, so pica is anything you can get your hands on, you're going to shove it in your mouth and try to swallow it. So if somebody gave her a piece of meat, she'd try to eat it bone and all. Anybody try to give her fruit, core, seeds, pit, gone. Toilet paper. Toilet paper. A lot of paper products, okay, thumbtacks, products. screws, coins, anything she can get her hands on, she's going to chuck in her mouth and try to swallow it. Yep. Um, a lot of people considered her possessed by the devil. She was constantly afraid that old scratch, what they called the devil at that point, was coming to get her. Constantly. She would spin on her head. And this poor old man, who had no idea what to do with this incredibly mentally ill young woman, put her into an almshouse. Well... Or in the slideshow, for $25, you can turn your barn into an almshouse. They didn't staff it with the most uh, medically professional individuals that they could. So, them not knowing what to do with this poor young woman either, they threw her in a Utica crib. This one specifically. Um, for 42 years. 42 years? 42 years. Like, in there for 42 years? 42 years inside of that box. Oh my god. Um... She, due to her mental illness, punched herself into the jaw until it didn't work anymore. She lost most of her teeth. She clawed out her own eyes. She bit off most of her own tongue. Her legs atrophied up to her chest. She was a husk of a woman. Oh my God. When we, when like we got that, her. I would do things. I would do things. Exactly. You are put in a box because you have the tendency to become violent during your episodes. And put into a box with not much but straw underneath you and a pan to catch what you leave behind. 
That would be really uncomfortable. Too. Absolutely. You saw the Utica crib in the museum. It's pretty much the exact same thing. She's also a very large woman. 5'10". So 5'10 put into that little box for 42 years. Wait. Stop. This is about half of the amount of dolls that Christina owns. It's about half of the dolls. So go, oh, <laughs> you little. You <laughs> fucked yourself, didn't you? A bit. All right. It's right there, y'all. Are we going there? Same, same sort of setup, Cemetery 2. Numbers, unless they've already been blocked. She's, she's on a mission. Find it, Rhoda's grave, huh? I want to find it out. I want to put the spirit box on it. There's a big one right here in this middle row. Oh yeah, there is that big one. Like right here, 
This is where the girl, uh, it was with our group earlier, said she got the same stuff. It hit all the way to the street. fourth dot. That's what she said, too. Yeah. And it keeps moving because it was down here. Yeah, it was down there earlier. It comes up. Yeah, you heard that, right? Yeah. But it is the woods, and that shit happens normally. I didn't see the headstones over there. It's kind of... What do you say about hearing voices? Are you getting it? I got a three. Three point eight. So I have it locked so that it will stay there until I get another reading. Oh. So I can see the last reading was. Gone now? Yep. Don't fall on that, but huh. don't stab yourself. Oh, yeah. You're bare legged. She has a three on hers, but we don't. We didn't do anything. Spot your step. It was last over here. Oh, there it goes. Oh, it's come back over here. You want to do a spare box? If you want. Yeah, maybe we'll start. Hold that for a second. I just chucked out my battery. Half of my battery on this camera too. I'll probably pulling 
power from your... Three, four. Will we notice it right away, or? Oh, you'll you'll notice. Yeah. Tell me. Like, should I notice it right now? Yes. Yes. 